Next, a robbery in Dorset that has some connections perhaps with Merseyside, not least because it happened at the same time as the Aintree Grand National. Or, in fact, like the Grand National, it was something that plainly didn't go as planned. Not only did the robbers fail to find the sort of money they were hoping for, in the gang's attempt to get away, two police officers were shot. Our reconstruction starts on the outskirts of Poole at 7.40 on a Friday evening, the 5th of March. We were going along Dorset Way, travelling towards Wareham Road, and all of a sudden I saw someone running along an embankment, which I thought was strange for that time of night. I told my boyfriend to slow down and have a closer look, and all of a sudden we saw a second man jump out of the bushes. When they met up, their behaviour was very suspicious, so I told my boyfriend to go and phone the police. Not this one, no. Over there, over there, the other one. This one. And this one. Two cars taken from the main Ford dealer weren't seen till two days later when they appeared two miles away off Lindsay Road. By the way, those two CRs are still parked out there, you know. Been there for a few days now. Before local residents alerted the police, the black car disappeared. Ashley Road in Poole at midday on Tuesday the 30th of March. I was driving back from a garage with a part for my car and uh, on approaching the traffic lights, I noticed a Ford Sierra Cosworth and the window was down on the driver's side and uh, I thought to myself, what on earth is that young lad doing in a £25,000 car? He looked totally out of place. Hey Steve, are you the lads are having a sweepstake on the Grand National? Four days later, Saturday the 3rd of April. This one Mr. Red, 15 to 1. Just before 10 a.m., the driver of a blue car followed a black Ford Cosworth into the macro car park off the Holes Bay Road. He got a good look at the driver of a white Sierra. The four men in the two cars seemed to know each other. <laughs> I reckon I've got a good horse there, Steve. Yeah, I reckon you've got a good chance there, mate. You should have a quiet day today. They'll all be in watching the race. Party politics at seven to one, very well backed, and Romany King. The Unigate Dairy in Bailey's Crescent was quieter than normal for a Saturday. Many of the staff had gone home early to watch the race. Suddenly heard this very strange noise, so I walked through the door, and the window was all smashed. And then I stepped out a bit further and I saw this Black Sierra park down the yard and quickly memorised the number. Zeta's lad, who's been very well back today, is 15 to 2. Night to one Royal Athlete and his stable companion, Garrison Savannah. Hello, police. Unigate Paul, Bailey Crescent. There's a, there's a robbery going on. The door's all kicked in, the glass everywhere. There's a black Sierra parked in the yard ticking over. Open the door! She had nowhere to hide and no choice but to let them in. Where's the money? Over there. It's all right, just sit down. I was very scared, but I was trying to keep calm, for answer the questions, just cooperate. How much is here? My thoughts were, I hope no one else comes up. Because Where's the rest? I thought it'd Don't get nasty if someone else Come came on. up. I know you've got more. Because you could see they meant business. Meanwhile, the robber's car was attracting more attention. I thought to myself, well, this is not parked in the right place. But the driver smiled at me and gave the thumbs up, which allayed my uh, suspicions. The gunmen searched frantically. It seems they were acting on bad information and had expected much more money. Due to milk rounds being franchised, Unigate handles far less cash than used to be the case. Come on, let's get off. You stay there a few minutes. Alan, there's a robbery going on. You're joking. I went out to the entrance of the silvery door and I saw this chap come out wearing a balaclava and I thought, the storm and he's not joking. I couldn't believe it. And with that, I saw the car pull slowly down the entrance to Bailey Crescent and turn left. You all right? You all right? They've taken the money. Don't worry. They've called the police. As long as you're all right, don't worry about the money. All units to make Bailey Crescent. Possible robbery in progress at Unigate Dairy. 
the account for the incident car responding en route. believed to be a black Ford Sierra Cogworth registration Kilo 581 Delta Bravo Golf. I repeat, I'll tell you what, Steve, we'll park up by Crazy Max. They may be coming Golf. down Wimborne Road. There is, Charlie. He's over there. He's over there. Yeah, incident car at scene. Fleet's been around about. Vehicle sighted. That's the police car. I think it wants us to stop. No, I think it's that Sierra it's trying to stop. Uh, we've got a blocked in in traffic. Pull over, mate. Pull over. Don't like the look of this. What's it? He's got a gun, mate. Watch it. As soon as the window went in, the first thing I became aware of was just a huge pressure in the vehicle. You feel it all over your body. Um, the next thing, you showered with glass, and I then became aware of a tremendous pain in my right arm. Um, I looked at my hand and saw that it was bleeding. In my rearview mirror, I saw a black car coming up. Noticed it was a Cosworth being driven badly. Looked like it could have been a joyrider. It's a fast road anyway, but you don't normally get people driving that quickly at the moment. The Cosworth was last seen speeding the wrong way down Churchill Road towards Lower Parkston. Within a few minutes, other police officers arrived at the scene just to make sure we're all okay. And with about two or three minutes after that, that's when the ambulance arrives and took us down to Poole Hospital. Both of us were actually very lucky. It could have been a lot worse. Uh, I've received seven shotgun pellets to the right thigh, four of which have been removed. Uh, three are still left in there. I should be off work for about two or three months at the most. I received injuries to my inside right forearm. Uh, it's caused damage to the tendons and the nerves. And I also took quite a number of uh, pellets on my left arm. But uh, the main thing is now I've got to work on physiotherapy. And it's going to be a few months' work before I come back. Tony Rogers, obviously the best chance of finding these people is through that black Cosworth. There aren't many in the United Kingdom, let alone in a single town like Poole. Yes, and we know that the, the offenders had the car for nearly a calendar month. We know it's only done 17 miles. 17? One seven? Yes, so it's been stored somewhere in the Poole area. In that case, it's quite possible that um, people have seen it. Local people have, have seen it in a garage somewhere, even been shown it by the, by the robbers. Yes, that's right. And on that day, Nick, two of our police officers nearly lost their lives. We are desperate. We're desperate to clear this crime. And I would appeal to anybody who's got any information, any small-time villain that might have been offered the car for sale or might have been shown it or heard another villain brag about stealing it, please come forward. I'm prepared to meet them at any time and I'm prepared to offer them complete protection. There's £10,000 on the table. We need to get these to stop them from doing it again. You think that the people who stole the car might not have been the same people who carried out the robbery, in other words? Yes, it's a strong possibility. OK, the car itself um, had a, a, a driver who, from whom we got a pretty good description during the, the robbery because, of course, he was seen giving that, that thumbs-up sign. Can you describe him to us? Yes, he's a, a, a chap about 20 years of age, a baby face, Clean shaven, short, blonde, curly hair, and quite slim. The registration plate, K581DBG, was false. It's actually a J registered car. They put this plate on. Do you know where those plates came from? Were they stolen or made up or what? No, we need to know that. We know that they're a Jepson make. Um, we think that they may be made in two separate locations um, to hide suspicion. The rear plate has got a cellulite grey backing to it. We would ask anybody in the motor trade to look through their records, inquire with their staff to see if they've made up these plates. Now, the other thing is we saw in the reconstruction at the macro car park earlier on that uh, day, Saturday the 3rd of April, the guy in the white Sierra, he seemed to know the people in, in the Cosworth. He might be completely unconnected with this, this offence. Yes, we would very much like to trace him. He's a man about 35 years of age, short and mousy hair, stocky build, and the witness says that he'd seen him somewhere before, so it may well be he's a local fellow. The car, the Cosworth, eventually was dumped in Hillman Road. A lot of witnesses might have seen that taking place and not have connected it with, with a robbery or anything untoward. Yes, we would appeal for anybody that was in the Hillman Road area that, that may have seen three men coming away from a nice-looking black Cosworth, 
one of those three would have at least been carrying a large, dark blue, head-type sports bag, which of course would have been containing the two shotguns and the money. And it would have been quite a big sports bag because one of the shotguns was not cut down. It was a, it was a full-length barrel. That's right, yes. OK. Now, this is uh, similar to the mask they were using. Now, there are thousands of these in, in joke shops up and down the country. It's obviously very difficult to appeal for this. But presumably you want to know anybody who vaguely fits any of those descriptions or could be linked with that black Cosworth, the white Sierra, something who had a mask like this. Yes, that's right. And again, of course, there may be somebody who has seen somebody in possession of a mask like this under suspicious circumstances. Perhaps they know they've got a record for violence or, or thieving. I want them to contact us, please. Do bear in mind the seriousness of this offence. Somebody, as Tony Rogers said, could easily have got killed. If you can help, the number here in the studio is 81 Or you can ring the incident room in Poole Police Station on 0202 223344. That's 0202, the code for Poole, 223344.